The podcast you are listening to of Holmberg's Morning Sickness is brought to you by my friends at Eric's Family Barbecue in Avondale. Meet, mesquite, repeat. Trust me on this one. You've had barbecue before, but you haven't had it this good. Eric's Family Barbecue in Avondale. Eric'sFamilyBBQ.com. Eric's Family Barbecue has arrived and is simply the best barbecue in Arizona. Come satisfy your taste buds with meats that are smoked over mesquite wooden sides that are made with fresh ingredients and tons of love. They have the best, juiciest brisket, pulled pork, rib sausage, turkey, or everyone's favorite, the Pitmaster Sampler that includes all the meat in four sides. Mac and cheese, potato salad, coleslaw, corn, or beans, yum. And for dessert, try some creamy banana pudding. Amazing. Eric's Family Barbecue in Avondale. Meat, mesquite, repeat. Make the trip. You won't be sorry. Dine in or take it to go. Go to Eric's Family bbq.com for more info you hear the words you say sometimes i mean who talks like that good morning everybody hello there welcome to friday it's 5 45 this is the morning sickness my name is john holmberg there's brady there's brett fesley there's big dick toledo we're off and running and from here on out this show will be done in corn Forever. <laughs> we will do everything now on this planet in a cornfield. That was the coolest thing, the most original thing baseball's done in 50 years. Forever. It's yeah. been a long time. That Field of Dreams game. Players wrestling. finally acting really good. Not only that, yeah. <laughs> it ended like they wrote a movie. I yeah. mean, the you know, the Sox are up four going into the ninth and they. Or what was it? Seven to it was seven to four. Up three, right? Yeah. Yep, up three. Aaron Judge hits a bomb. Eight Brensons hit. You, well, yeah, you get dingers <laughs> like crazy. You get Gallo walked. Then Stanton drives one out, and you're like, "Oh my God!" The Yankees are. And then Anderson goes deep on the walk and run into the corn. That was amazing, and the introductions were the coolest thing I've ever oh, seen. Yeah. I, Kevin Costner comes out of the cornfield. Yep. But you don't know if you if you're living under a rock. Baseball played a game last night in the cornfields of the movies uh, from uh, Field of Dreams. In Iowa. In Iowa, right. So the, the movie house where he built the, the famous baseball field out of corn in the movie back in 1989, uh, they built a, a better version professional uh, field right next to the, the movie one. But you could still see the movie one in the aerial views. It was amazing. So they did this cornfield thing. And then Kevin Costner comes wandering out. In the beginning, first, just like the movie, like two minutes, he yeah. comes wandering out onto the field, and he's just standing there out of the corn. The crowd's going a little bit bananas, and just looks back after like two minutes. The music's going. If you build it, he will come. They're doing the whole thing, dramatic man. They were, and then you turn around, and then uh, here out come the Yankees and, and White Sox together out of the corn, and it was it was the just same like the movie. It was the same illusion. Yeah. That they used in the movies, it looked like they just appeared. It was the coolest thing I've seen in a long time. It was a four minute intro. It was incredible. Four and really all cool. of all baseball needs to do it. And that, but I know what people are saying. Oh, you get tired of it after a while, right? Pick a movie, recreate the scene, and play a baseball game on it. I don't like casino. I don't care. Put oh, yeah. it. Everything needs to be tied back because we kept saying it was nostalgia, but it wasn't. It was a made up thing. That, you know, it's like a cartoon came to life. There was nothing real about Field of Dreams. It's not something like, oh, man, that's the lure of baseball. It was just a movie. But that cornfield, there's something magical about that whole thing. And that was the that was the neatest thing I've seen in So forever. they're going to do it again next year. Yeah. They'll do it every year. But I'm thinking we need to get other movies involved. You know, we need to have other movies where we can put a base, like Bull Durham. We should have that stadium Hosting oh, yeah, and yeah. Kevin Costner goes out on that one again. We just it's just it, it, all Kevin Costner movies. Waterworld. We'll put a field out in the middle of Waterworld and oh, we'll make it God. so there's no land. I know, but it would still be neat. And everybody's got gills. And Turn it to, into a series, Yellowstone. Yeah, everybody's got to swim around. So, yeah, exactly. Get the World Series will be Yellowstone. <laughs> I'm all for it. Even the bad ones. For love of the game, everybody gets to bang Kelly Preston in her prime. It's the fantastic natural. Idea. Oh, the lights just oh, explode. Oh, yeah, that'd be great. The only thing missing last night to me. Would have, like you said, James Earl Jones doing the intro. That would have been perfect. Would have been a topper right there. Out. Microbus parked on the side of the field. Yeah, exactly. Just like they the got movie, the yeah. bus over by the real field. They, yeah, they got all right. that stuff over by the the movie set field. But this yeah, you would, oh, James Earl Jones had to do that. You'd think they would have tried to drag him out. They kept showing him in every commercial. Yeah. I know, but he, yeah, he he never showed up. And Ray Liotta never showed up either. You would think those Shoeless two. Joe. Yeah. 
the uh, out the left fielder or, or uh, yeah uh, for the White Sox White Sox yeah left shoeless should have been shoeless yep. should have played last night without shoes <laughs> that should no happened. Jimenez has had enough issues lately we don't need him to Jimenez do plays else. no shoes tomorrow <laughs> uh, next time through the left fielder always has to go shoeless shoeless Joe it was the best it was so great now batting Britt Gardner oh, that would have oh, been amazing oh, I'm all over that. It would have been. I would have been unbelievable. I was telling Toledo earlier that that is a game that, like, if if you had somebody on the fence about baseball, That's you it. show them that game. I agree. I, that I, I couldn't agree more. And and top it all off, it was a phenomenal baseball game. It was entertainment. Oh, yeah. That's what it was. Yeah. Finally, baseball got it. Yeah. They they beyond say everybody saying, "Oh, baseball's boring. Baseball's boring," and it is. Sandlot. Somebody just texted in Sandlot. Perfect. Yep. Another James Earl Jones thing. Yep. Put put the boys out on Sandlot and have that recreate them all. They finally understood the link between entertainment and baseball has been missing forever. And you know what the best part was? They got rid of everything that's ruined baseball. Nobody talked about exit velocity. Nobody talked about angles and math and all the crappy statistics that they've been adding to baseball. War and war and all that. They just played the game, played it really well. It was awesome. It was just incredible. But you know what that baseball would end up doing is like rookie of the year. But yeah, I, I thought. Wrigley Field, Boston, you know, you have all these stadiums and stuff. And then I turned it after it was over and watched uh, Shohei Otani pitch for a little bit. And it was lifeless. And that's like the Babe Ruth of baseball right now. This yeah. guy, that nobody's ever been, you know, uh, in the running for Cy Young and MVP for two different reasons. He's led the league. It's a, it's the first time since Babe Ruth that uh, the top two home run hitters in the league uh, are playing in the same game and one of them's pitching to the other one. It's a first. It was uh, yeah, with Guerrero. Yeah, Guerrero. Yeah. It was unreal. It was the coolest thing. But I turned it and I'm like, this this game has no corn. I have no interest. If you can't disappear into the heavenly field and come in and out, they did that overhead shot of the sun setting, and I'm like, good God, this thing is could have been a you know, the night was perfect. It's like I was texting yesterday. It, it it seemed like it was about more about the game than the business of the yes. game. Yes, oh. and it was it was so great, and it was such an intimate. Uh, because there was only what eight thousand people were there, it was such yeah. an intimate setting it was that it didn't. It looked almost like a minor league game, and it sounded louder than most yeah. like games I've been to with the at this warehouse of nightmares downtown oh. here. They, I've always thought that the Diamondbacks would be better off playing all their games over there at Salt River Fields because it's a better stadium. I mean, they can yeah. they can get twelve thousand in there. It's huge. You charge uh, the same amount you do for spring training. You might pack it up a little bit. And take it. They won't do it because of the heat. The fans yeah. would never show up. So you got to have that big air conditioned box down there. Somebody wrote in, uh, do a game about Brewster's Millions. <laughs> yeah, so you got to have the, the train, train going through the, yes. through the I'm outfield. All in. <laughs> I'm all in. A league of their own. Dress them up like uh, the ladies. <laughs> Peaches <laughs> again. I do. Being a kind of a cynical realist, did have a little bit of a problem that uh, the black players decided to go ahead and play the game. <laughs> not because of me if i was them i'd be like wait we're gonna wear uniforms from 1918 <laughs> really you got a point you're gonna put me in that uniform really and say let's celebrate the game okay and there's Ant- no, you know, tim anderson hits the walk-off home run at the end and you're like this guy wouldn't have been allowed on that field that's why when field of dreams came out people were saying they didn't do anything with like you know the black players or anything it was just lily white guys coming from before jackie robinson could play Standing on this field and asking everybody, "Is this heaven?" Yeah, there's no black people. You're racist. You, you <laughs> bastards. It's, this isn't heaven. This was when baseball was at its worst. It's the segregation of the game. On top of that, no whiteies hit a home run last night. That's either. right. Oh, so Jimenez. Well, Brett Gardner got one, didn't oh, he? Oh, that's yeah. right. That's right. That's right. You're but right, I mean, yeah, the, uh, yeah, you're right. It was it was a Stanton and people of color game Judge, last night. Absolutely, Anderson. And the there you will Abreu. be uh, first one in history in Iowa. Yeah, major yeah. league first major league player to hit a home run. Doesn't in Iowa. change. That's amazing. Well, again, wouldn't have been allowed in the gear, and you gotta, you gotta, as Major League Baseball, consider that, especially in this day and age when people notice those kind of things. But I, I was sitting there kind of giggling last night, going, "Whew, somebody's got to bring it up that all these uniforms represent something absolutely terrible." They're wearing their throwback nineteen nineteen jerseys. Like, oh. If I'm black, I ain't wearing that one. Well, if you watch the end of it, when they were talking to the guys at uh, at the the postgame, A-Rod was talking about, well, it's good seeing the African-Americans stepping up and blah, 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 blah. And it's like, dude, why why, do you you got to bring that up right now? Not especially in that gear. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, I'm with you. But uh, look, I don't care who steps up. That was a beautiful baseball game. But they finally got it. I was entertained by a baseball game for the first time in a couple of years because they've just lost the skill to entertain. 
They're they so, got it back last night. They, oh, did they? That was so much fun. And yeah, so somebody says Silence of the Lambs. I don't know how that works. <laughs> I don't know how that ties Just in. Just themes. Themes to the thing. But like, you know, you, you, you decorate the entire uh, ballpark. You know, you wait your teams on a 10-day roadie. So then they just get a construction crew in there, and everything about it is the cells, and you know multiple MIGs is on the screen, and he's like, and he's chucking his junk at Jody Foster, and it's just yeah it's themes. Themes are like oh it's Silence of the Lambs week. Sometimes they do Star Wars night, and they make us dress up. Yeah, Elvis night. Right, and, and, and that's night. kind of Remember and it's more fun. Diamondbacks yeah. MGM they bring over in the Star Trek, and they had all those characters would come over. In fact, oh, one, yeah, it would happen. Baseball in a movie wouldn't be a bad idea on that big-ass TV. Yeah. Just show the movie while the game's going on. I've always said baseball needs to be the focus, but we've lost that. You go to stadiums like Wrigley, even Dodger Stadium to a certain degree, although not as much as it was. Wrigley, even name. Uh, but it's just you just go there and there's a game, and that's pretty much it. You don't have, sorry, Brady, morons on a, on a <laughs> top of a dugout dancing and singing to tell me exactly <laughs> How fun I'm, uh, well, all the fun I'm having when the game's not on. It's like, look, we're doing Plinko and it does it float and ding dongs and whatever. I Wrigley, don't know. the field has its uh, own magic. Wrigley, I mean, you is, go in there, the reason. You, you could just stare at the field. Yep. Yeah. And then the game happens That's on the field. That's the problem. The other visually, you're you're being entertained just by your location. You're in a you're in you know it's like being in uh, Venice. Yeah. You, you, there's nothing to do. You're just looking around going, this is neat. But, uh, yeah, down at this ballpark here, this it made me hate this ballpark downtown more than I already did. I can't stand Chase Field. It's the worst building for sports I've ever been in. It absolutely, it's, their sight lines are bad. The, the, the stadium is cavernously large, way too big. Uh, it's empty all the time because of that. I mean, you get 30 people in there, it feels weird. It's, you know, it's when a, you go in there the first couple of times, and uh, if you've done the, which I know you've done, we had the meal on the uh, balcony. At it used to be Fridays. Maybe yeah, it still is. I think it is. Um, pretty amazing. But you don't realize how far you're removed from yeah. the game. See, I thought that sucked too. I thought everything about that thing is too far from me. Like you, Pittsburgh has a stadium for baseball. PNC Park it holds thirty thirty three thousand people tops. Yeah, and and the furthest you are from the field at any time is like a hundred and four feet. Like they built it, even in the second deck, they've got it. They've got a, some mastermind engineering thing to where you're almost on the field at all times. It's and it's beautiful. They said that uh, you know that stat is like 180 in uh, yeah, Chase Field. It's not 180 miles. It's the worst stadium in baseball. There's no close second. Uh, you open up, I think, from the home plate going right. up to the. You're you're constantly uh, bombarded with nonsense and noise and ads and. Idiots on dugouts and some stuffed animal that throws peanuts at you and says, "Here's a free ticket to this." It's terrible. But it's like so big that even when if the idiots are on the dugout, a lot of times you won't even know that's going on if you're across the field. Yeah, I think that all empty seats should be corn now. <laughs> I think that would be it. that's it to just prove that, and that would really kind of almost embarrass a team and make it visually stunning. It's just hey, we got forty three thousand empty seats. Get your asses out there, put some corn in every one of those seats. Fill all the unsold seats with corn, and everybody's got to cram in and be like, huh, the cornfield is pretty cool. I'd much rather watch that. But, yeah, the this it made me hate Chase Field, like, double what problem, I already do. The problem with the D-backs is it's it's like the game is secondary to them. Completely. It's all the goofy crap in between. Yep. I and mean, I know the team isn't good this year, but even when they were good, it was always it always seemed that baseball was they secondary. Sold it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and, and, uh, and the fans take notice of that because every time you go to the game, it's uh, everybody on their phones. It's the up and down in every half yeah. inning. I sat there. At, I was at a Cubs uh, Diamondbacks game years ago, and this guy from Chicago. And I mean, if you were to if you were to central cast a movie, go. I need somebody who's from Chicago. It was a dude next to me, kind of a ruddy face, red nose. I think he drank. He was everybody's Chicago uncle, and he's sitting there, big, pregnant belly, uh, looked like Tommy Lasorda, ate Tommy Lasorda, and he's got that belly, and he's leaning back, and he goes. What the hell's going on around here with all the getting up and down between innings? This is goddamn garbage. And I'm like, I didn't, I didn't. He goes, every inning, this lady's got to get up and wander over to that lady. And that lady's got, and I'm like, you're right. And I started to watch, and the aisles fill every half inning of people walking around. And it was awful. Yeah, this stadium here stinks. The team's just garbage anyway. There's yeah. no reason to ever go down and watch that. First until- year they opened up, you know, when you're talking about all the promos that happened in between. The uh, Diamondbacks uh, 
open up with the largest sponsorships yeah. record. Like, like Nissan uh, bought the largest. Because the money had and to go Miller down. also at the time, and that, and that was a big kind of well, a first bragging year. deal. Yeah, first year in, everybody knew that stadium was going to be full most of the year. Capasa, the steps. It was the first time they've. Capasa was everywhere yeah. when that thing opened. And I don't even know if that's still a thing. That was like Spanish Google, wasn't it? At first, yes. yeah. It was crazy. But yeah, corn, man, and Sandlot, and a league of their own. I would love that. I would watch that a league of their own game. Hilarious if they had to wear those uniforms and you had the peaches. Out there playing. I think the Diamondbacks have earned the right to dress up like women, especially in 2021, where no one can really say it's bad that we've uh, gussied them up like the Rockford Peaches. And if any of the players go, I'm not dressing up like a woman, it's like, oh, really? You hate they? You're, 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 a, you're a trans bigot? What's the big deal? Because I'm a man. Oh, okay. So uh, antiquated gender roles are your first priority. I think you just get all over these guys and then sit them down. But I dress up. The Di- you lose more than 104 games. Your last however many games above 104 have to be played as the Rockford Peaches. Got to play in the skirts. You huh? got to play in the skirts. <laughs> if you, uh, Let's make it 100. If you lose 100 games in a season, however many games are left that year, you're in the Peaches gear. That's it. That's a good – see? And people would – like, I'd go down and watch that. I'm like, oh, I'm going to watch these pro ball players. It would, it would discourage – every team would start playing out of their heads at loss 97. Like I'm not wearing the I'm not wearing the dresses. Well, you got to wear dresses, boys. Sorry, you got to. We turn this whole thing into a league of their own. The second you go a hundred plus, oh, it'd be awesome. It's a lot like what those uh, fantasy leagues do. Oh, it'd be the great. punishment to the guy that finished last. Well, I don't know if they can punish them anymore, <laughs> but that's the one we'd have to do. Not call it punishment. Just say it's a world that's trans the problem. Day, LGBTQ <laughs> plus Diamondbacks night. Oh, we need we need a bad news bears game too. That would be great. Yep. It's all good. That was uh, Tanner throwing out the slurs every five <laughs> well, seconds. I don't know if we'd mic him up like that. <laughs> you already got you already got uh, you already got drunk ass uh, Tony Larusa, so yeah. we could have him doing the Walter Matthau act. Kelly would coming be, out on the motorcycle yeah. from the outfield. That would be awesome. I wouldn't even be allowed in this uniform, buttermaker. <laughs> I'd stop with the race there, I'm mad, and just get a hit. <laughs> crack ass cracker. Come on, Anderson. Lean into one. I would watch that all day. Just <laughs> clips from Bad News Bears oh, yeah. during, oh, man. Baseball, you got me back for a night. And then and you're going to give it back because then I got to hear, you know, some idiot tell me about launch angles and velocities and BS I don't care about just watching the game. Oh, I, so I hope other – other, uh, Play-by-play guys and color guys actually watched that game last night and said, oh, you this know is what, how maybe we, do we are doing yeah. it a little bit wrong. We can change. Absolutely. And then I hope Vin Scully got on the phone with all of them. And that's how you call a baseball game. You let the field do all the work. And that's it. Vin, Vin calling that game last night. If James Earl Jones was the in-house PA guy yeah. and Scully called the game, I'd, I would, it would have been baseball heaven. Is this heaven? Why? Because uh, all the players are white? Shut up. Is it heaven? No, it's <laughs> Iowa, where everybody's white. But yeah, the only beef that uh, you might come out of this thing with is that the players of color were in uniforms that they would have never been allowed to wear. And I've always said that, that baseball's biggest mistake is ignoring its past. It's throwback day here at Wrigley Field, 1938 being celebrated. I'm like, I don't think Dexter Fowler wants to wear that gear. <laughs> they made him... Leading off for the Cubs, Dexter Fowler in those beautiful 1938 uniforms. Well, that's the first time. It really looks good on black. Who would have ever guessed? <laughs> and it did. It's that deep gray Heather uh, thing on his uh, beautiful dark skin. I was like, we should have let him play for just the aesthetics. It was gorgeous. For the money, can he have played in any uniform? He did not, yeah, you know what? I and don't that's, care. That's, yeah, the, half those guys you ask them, like, I want to be active and stuff, but I'm making $28 million a year. I will wear, I'll wear slave clothes. Yep. <laughs> give me the chains. Gotta, yeah, give me the chains. I'll, I'll bat with those on. <laughs> Dexter Fowler making an interesting decision here to be shackled at the plate in some sort of activist announcement. And he still manages to scurry down the line to first base. Well played, although very uncomfortable to the white eyes of Iowa. <laughs> Yeah, that would have made everyone really uncomfortable oh, if any black player had shackles on. <laughs> I wouldn't have been allowed in this uniform, man. <laughs> oh, he's making a political statement in the most beautiful vistas of all baseball history. This is going to be bad. Billboard on the uh, outfield wall, Candyland. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, we don't want to go Django and Chain Brady. <laughs> I'd watch it. <laughs>
And he's rounding first. He jumps over the hot box with Kerry Washington. And then in second base, he's safe. What a play. As uh, Candyland has turned into an absolute nightmare. Blacks versus whites here. Yeah, that was... Uh, they ignore that every time. Every time they do throwback, it's true. they ignore the uniform. I don't. I've been, I've been bringing this. This and the Veterans uh, Hospital doing the fireworks every 4th of July in Phoenix are the two things I'm like, is, is, am I the only one who is going to say anything about these things? It's like, we just want, want you to wrap around that rebel flag. Yeah. And just- well, as quick as every uh, sports channel is to bring race into the, to the deal, this is the only one that's actually really valuable. This is the only one that actually has some merit to say, what are we celebrating here? You know? it's, it's acknowledging the history. It's I mean, the truth. It's, yeah. and, but I'm Stephen A. Jackson. None of those guys ever say anything about the uniform being from a time where uh, half the guys playing last night wouldn't have been allowed to play in the years they were celebrating those uniforms. At least the uniform. They could have worn their modern uniforms and been, you know. But they actually had, the. I mean, those uniforms, by the way. Nothing better. Oh yeah, than what we're looking at last night—the hats, everything—that was great. You couldn't wear them as like a normal dude, like walking around in that. Yeah, you look like, like a man. You got to have like, the full uniform like on, and, and then yeah. top of your pajamas. <laughs> but yeah, you'd have to wear the full gear, and if you're doing that, you're an insane person. I was looking for the jerseys though online. They're not selling those yet. You got to get one. I, of oh those. yeah, that's incredible. But even Liam Hendricks between innings, he's like, "Man, we love these uniforms. We're trying to we're trying to get MLB yeah. to let us wear these, you know, on a reg in the rotation." Yeah. Well, Abreu's not. <laughs> I would rather just play with the ones where I wasn't getting beaten up by white people every time I got close to a ballpark. Yeah, it's it was, and you know, go back to the old like, uh, you know, the the Negro League fields. Like they've got one of the 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 Negro League Hall of Fame. I think is in Kansas City. Kansas City, yeah. Yeah, and they got a field out there. Throw one of those on and make them make them go monarchs, and no white guys can play. Oh, that'd be good. That'd be a great game, right? When do they start yeah. elevating the uh, pitcher's mound? It's always been elevated. They actually tore, they also uh, pushed it down a little bit for Did a while, they? and then uh, yeah, Bob Bob, Bob Gibson, Gibson yeah, just was, was destroying yeah, people. He couldn't get hit, so they uh, they moved it for him. They've they've uh, toyed with the mound in the past, but it's always been a bump. Uh, but the they hill. then became regulation in the I think it was the twenties when they made it absolute regulation everywhere. But it was never flat. I don't well maybe in the, like eighteen hundreds, but. Yeah, but they, I think they dropped it back down they for did. Gibson. Yep. Just Gibson he was just killing like everybody. A, he was standing on top of a hill yeah. and throwing straight down at a million miles an hour at guys' heads. And, yeah, Bob Gibson was the reason they said dump that thing. I think they dumped it down like almost a foot. They just cut off a huge – the thing used to be a big pile of yeah. dirt. Kind of hard to climb. Uh, anyway, it was awesome. That was a great uh, experience to even see it. And I was at a bar – uh, staring at the TVs. I'm like, oh, yeah, the Field of Dreams game is on. And the place just froze when those guys came out of that corner. And some guy, you just hear, it's just guys, though. Dumb guys when you're all sitting there. It could be an engineer. It could be a, an aero uh, engineer, uh, uh, you know, NASA guy. You just hear him go, oh, it's so cool when they came <laughs> out of that corn. Simple stuff gets us. That was neat. Everything, the Oscars. Should be in a cornfield, and everybody should have to come out of that cornfield. Everybody should experience coming out of the cornfield at least once in their life. Malachi. <laughs> All of it. Don't care. Everything. It's great stuff. Uh, you don't want to uh, – children of the corn is a different thing. <laughs> if you have the murders of Malachi out there, maybe. Uh, let's get a wake-up song, shall we? 585-9800. A good one to uh, get us out of this corn to start a Friday. It's 98 KUPD. Wake up! The best the world has to offer in music, drama, and comedy. You've been listening to Holmberg's Morning Sickness Podcast, brought to you by our friends at Eric's Family Barbecue in Avondale. Meet, mesquite, repeat, ericsfamilybbq.com.